blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with each one of you now and always. In the 1980s, young Peter Akinola's studies at Virginia Theological Seminary gave him a first-hand understanding of the American church and Western revisionist theology and ethics. God used this experience as an invaluable foundation for his later work in leading the Global South and the Anglican Communion. Your Grace. It's been an amazing privilege for me to be able to walk with you through these many years. I still remember the time when we were here at, at Truro Church and you began trying to bring together the primates and the leadership of the Global South to stand firm for the, for the gospel message. Being part of that great movement in 1998 at the Lambeth Conference when the resolution Lambeth 110 was passed, little did we know that following that, there'd be such a big backlash that this Orthodox Anglican movement, in order to protect an Orthodoxy and promote it in the Anglican communion, needed another leader of a stature who could mobilize the whole church. And the Lord raised Archbishop Akinola. I can still remember the time when the Windsor Report was first published and you read it quickly, analyzed it very skillfully, and then set a path forward uh, so that we could indeed stay firm to the gospel. At primates meetings in Dromantine and in Tanzania, he endured with considerable dignity, anger and pressure from Western primates in response to his firm stand on central matters of the Christian faith, his insistence on integrity in matters of Eucharistic fellowship with those who had departed from the faith, and his unremitting loyalty to those who had looked to him for Episcopal oversight. It was his pastoral concerns that initially led to the setting up of Kena, primarily to care for Nigerian Anglicans living in the United States. We quickly became aware of the need of others who wanted to stay true to their Anglican heritage, and so we welcomed them as well. The Cana Congregation Churches made the decision to leave the Episcopal denomination and the, and the Virginia Diocese in December of 2006. We had to have an affiliation with a branch of the Anglican Communion. Archbishop Akinola courageously provided us that branch. It's sometime, in fact often, been referred to among ourselves as the Archbishop Akinola lifeboat. Archbishop Akinola stood, frankly, like a rock uh, at a time when it seemed that uh, we were being abandoned at many levels. Uh, Archbishop Akinola came to Truro several times, uh, was very articulate, very forceful, uh, and frankly, very pastoral to all of us. The Falls Church was founded in 1732. The gospel of Jesus Christ has been preached in this church faithfully since that time. It fell to us in our time to preserve these properties for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Bishop Akinola made that possible. It's people of same faith coming together, sharing the same views, sharing the supremacy of Christ, supremacy of the Bible. And that's why Kana was formed. Today we are free to be in communion with you. But as long as we hold this together, we are with you every inch of the way. The idea of is to bring together people that share the faith and give them spiritual guidance with the primate being authorized to give Episcopal oversight. Kena is a miracle. Your Grace, uh, I want to give you personal thanks for rescuing um, the Anglicans in America. Uh, we were in dire straits and God used you to help us. And I thank you for allowing me to be part of the rescue effort. It's always been a joy to walk alongside you and to see 
the multifaceted way in which you engage in ministry. Few people really understand the way in which you have such pastoral concern for the people of Nigeria, for your own diocese, indeed for the congregation in which you serve. He's a man that listens and acts. And God has empowered him, God has used him. Archbishop Akinola certainly was the man of the hour for the Anglican Communion in the first decade of the 21st century. I was trying to think where he would stand in relation to those different kinds of, uh, of history. And I thought of Athanasius, who back in the uh, fourth century was a man who stood for the church, who stood for the truth of the church against any number of opponents and whatever it cost him. His leadership is reminiscent of that of Winston Churchill, of whom General Alexander said that to work with him was often exasperating, and he wouldn't have missed it for the world. You have called the church to become aware of the challenges posed by a resurgent Islam growing four and a half times faster than the Christian church. You have drawn to our attention the considerable suffering of Christians in Nigeria's north and around the world. The challenges facing Nigeria today by Islam are considerable. The growth and impact of Islam is something we have to address. As your Dean Theologian, I would personally like to thank you for your initiatives in the field of theology, in particular the development of the Crowther Institute. We know that you've been a success when it comes to Christian work and that the younger generation of priests and bishops will emulate you and do the selfless work this, your mission has brought to the world. The Crowther Institute and its development under your leadership both present and I trust in the years to come will prove to be a significant force in the life of the Church of Nigeria. In actual fact, the Church of Nigeria has taken us to a very high ground and we appreciate all that he's been doing. We are moving towards 20 million. May God bless him and may God bless all those who love him and his ministry. And may his ministry here, even after he left, flourish to the glory and honor of God. Archbishop Peter, may I express on behalf of the very many in the Church of England who admire and respect you, our grateful thanks. Archbishop Peter, we are so grateful to our Lord Jesus Christ for calling you to serve the Church throughout the world at this strategic time. Your passion for the Gospel, your love for Jesus Christ and for all his people has been an inspiration to me. And I pray God that you would continue to, to stay firm it's been indeed a privilege to know you as a friend, as well as a pastor, as well as a leader. We praise God for your courage, your faithfulness, and for all that you have done for us in North America. We thank God that you have reminded us to declare the gospel message, and that you and we together believe that it will change lives, the gospel will change communities, the gospel will change the church, and the gospel will change the world. From the book of Joshua in uh, chapter 24, Joshua says to the people, you can go and serve whoever you want, but for me and for my house, I will serve the Lord. And if there is an inscription I would put on any celebration, any commemoration, of Archbishop Bakinola, it is that for me and for my house, I will serve the Lord. Thank you, Your Grace, for all that you've done for us, uh, for the churches in Virginia, the churches across this country, uh, indeed for all faithful Christians around the world. We thank God for you. We thank God for all that you've done. And we pray that God will continue to bless you in these coming years. Amen.